The problem with cauliflower rice is that it usually has an aftertaste of, well, cauliflower. The fried rice recipes I make today will not only mask the flavor of cauliflower, but will also taste nearly identical to fried rice for half the calories. Let's get into it. Let's start with prepping our dumplings. Keep in mind for all of these recipes, my goal is as quick and as simple as possible. So frozen and pre-prepped items are going to be the name of the game for this video. I am using these dumplings I got from Walmart because they only have 125 calories for three of them and taste pretty dang good. Put them in a bowl with about five grams of water, then cover 95% of the bowl with cling wrap, leaving a corner exposed for steam to escape. Throw them in the microwave for 90 seconds. While that's heating up, Let's get our ingredients on the counter and ready to use. We will need cauliflower rice, avocado oil or oil of choice, green onions, garlic, oyster sauce, soy sauce, MSG, and black pepper. Take the dumplings out of the microwave and cut them up with scissors so we have more dumpling bites in our fried rice. Then put your frozen rice in the microwave for the time recommended on the label. While that's cooking, let's get our ingredients prepped. If you don't do this beforehand, you run a much higher risk of overcooking or burning something because this dish comes together in just a couple minutes. Let's also start getting our pan preheated on medium low. Try to use the deepest pan you own or preferably a wok. As you can see, mine has been through the ringer but still works like a charm. Then grab a cutting board and chop seven grams of green onion. I use these small bowls from the dollar store to weigh out the ingredients and they are very easy to just pour into the wok when ready. Then I crush the garlic with the side of my knife making the outer shell easier to peel off and weigh them out until I get eight grams on my scale. I know I said as easy as possible, but the fresh garlic and onion will create so much additional flavor that dried ingredients can't hold a candle to. Plus, we have to wait on the cauliflower to heat up anyway. However, if you're in a pinch, don't worry about it and use what you have. Into one bowl, add 15 grams oyster sauce, 20 grams soy sauce, 2 grams MSG, and a dash of pepper. Mix until combined. Oh yeah can't forget about the oil too. Use whatever oil you prefer, but avocado oil is what I have, so that is what I will be using. 9 grams. By the way, I just got this non-drip oil dispenser and it's an absolute game changer for someone who is cooking in the kitchen. No more oil sitting on the outside of the bottle or drips that go onto the counter or floor that I have to clean. The pour is also incredibly accurate. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description below. The pan should be preheated now, so we'll add our oil and about 20 seconds later, add our our green onion. For even frying, move the onions around to make sure that they are all covered in oil. I will let them fry for about 30 seconds while stirring. Then add the dumpling so the noodle can crisp up and take on a greater depth of texture. After another 45 to 60 seconds, crush in our garlic. Make sure you start stirring this right away or the garlic will burn. Once the garlic becomes fragrant, add the entire bag of cauliflower rice and stir until everything is well combined. Lastly, we will add the sauce mixture to the top and mix in. I like to let all the flavors combine for a minute or two while constantly stirring. To finish, throw your fried rice into a bowl or onto a plate and it's time to eat. If you want to get real fancy, you can put your fried rice into a bowl and press it down so everything sticks together. Then place a plate face down on the bowl and flip it over. The high quality look of this dish will not only impress yourself, but anyone else that is over for dinner. And it tastes just as good as it looks. This is a Chinese restaurant staple, and we will make one nearly as good with much bigger succulent shrimp. First things first, we will grab our bag of frozen pre-cooked shrimp, weigh out 100 and 28 grams in a strainer and run them under cold water. After about five minutes, they should be thawed and we will dry them off with a paper towel. But while those are thawing, let's get our ingredients ready. Throw your riced cauliflower in the microwave and cook according to the instructions. It should be ready about the time that the shrimps are. Then put your pan on the stovetop on medium low. Similar to the last recipe, we will get seven grams of green onions chopped up and eight grams of garlic de-shelled and in a bowl. We will then grab a bag of frozen vegetables and weigh out 30 grams. Any bag of vegetables will work, but what I would see most in my fried rice in Chicago was peas and carrots. So that's what I will be using. Then in one bowl, add 20 grams oyster sauce, 25 grams soy sauce, two grams MSG, and a dash of pepper. Stir until combined. Now this may sound like a lot of sodium in a recipe, and it is, but 
One, Chinese food is inherently very salty and people usually add even more salt through soy sauce as they are eating. And two, the cauliflower rice has absolutely no seasoning on it and needs a lot of love for it to taste great. Feel free to use lower sodium soy sauce or lower amounts as you prefer. Back to the recipe. The final ingredient we need to prep is eight grams of the oil of your choice. Take all of your prepped ingredients and place them beside your wok. Before we cook, we need to pat the shrimp dry with a paper towel, then cut them up into smaller pieces. How small? Whatever your preference is. I will cut mine into halves or thirds while leaving some of them whole for diversity in every bite. Let's put the oil in the pan and about 20 seconds later, add the green onions, making sure they are all covered in oil. After about 30 seconds of letting them fry, add your garlic. Again, keep stirring to avoid any burning. After the garlic becomes fragrant, add your frozen vegetables and keep on stirring. As you could probably tell by now, constantly stirring all these ingredients is the key to not burning them or uneven cooking. After about one minute, throw your rice into the mix and get everything well combined. Then add your sauce mixture. Thoroughly blend everything together and let cook for another minute or so while you keep stirring. Lastly, add your shrimp and mix for 30 more seconds. Time to plate it and eat it. This low calorie shrimp fried rice will remind you of the real deal and may have you cooking it for dinner for an entire week straight like it did for me. Speaking of the real deal, Gorilla Mind's pre-workout is just that and is the product that made me want to be a part of the company. Even on days I don't feel like working out, their pre-workout gives me the energy to power through the hard reps and gives me an absolutely insane pump. If you want to try out any of their products, use code E4CM for 10% off your order. The third and final recipe is a special one that I didn't think would be that great, but it ended up being my favorite one of the bunch and you will see why soon. By the way, Huge shout out to Aaron and Claire, whose video inspired me in many ways to make this video. I highly recommend if you have never seen their channel to check them out. This recipe requires an egg sunny side up. The best way to make sure you don't overcook the yolk is to make them low and slow. Because of this, I will start now by spraying a small pan with oil, cracking an egg into it, and covering it with a lid. Once that is done, I will put my burner on low. While that is doing its thing, we might as well get the cauliflower rice prepped and wok preheated. Cook the rice for the suggested time and preheat your wok on medium low. The secret ingredient is next and that is center cut bacon. Just two slices will take this recipe to the next level and make for such a flavorful final dish. Center cut bacon only has 70 calories for two pieces, but we have to remember the label almost always accounts for the cooked bacon, not the fat that is rendered out. In this dish, we won't be draining any of the fat, which the USDA says is about 33% higher than what's on the nutrition label. This means that our bacon has about 85 calories per two slices instead of 70. I think it is important I explain this not only because several people have asked before, but I want the calories to accurately reflect what is in the recipe as closely as I can. Anywho, let's cut the bacon into small strips and put them into a glass container. In separate bowls, add 11 grams of chopped green onion and 6 grams of garlic. The star of the show here is, of course, the kimchi. I will openly admit I am a rookie when it comes to kimchi, and I apologize ahead of time to any kimchi lover that is already mother effing me in the comments. Now it goes without saying, making your own kimchi would be ideal for the best flavor, but this is lazy fried rice, not the best fried rice of all time. You can of course use whatever pre-made kimchi you would like, but I tried these three brands and I thought, this one was the best. Anyways, we will weigh out 84 grams of it into a bowl. If you would like, you can cut it into smaller pieces, but I will leave it as is. To that bowl, I will add 15 grams oyster sauce, 15 grams soy sauce, 2 grams MSG, and a dash of black pepper. Mix until thoroughly combined. This is going to be an absolute flavor bomb. Our pan should be hot, but we have to check on our egg first. Depending on your stovetop, it already may be done, or it may need a couple more minutes. If it is done, plate it and put it off to the side. You will know it's done if you don't see any snot looking clear liquid sitting near the yolk. But at the same time, the egg yolk still jiggles around when you move the pan. If it isn't done, let it keep cooking for a few more minutes, but keep a close eye on it. Let's bring everything together. Add two grams of the oil of your choice and your bacon to the wok. Mix together and let those cook for about two minutes. Once the aroma of bacon is permeating through your kitchen, 
add your green onion and mix everything together. After a minute, crush in the garlic and stir for about 30 seconds. At this point, the flavors have come together, so it's time to add our rice and mix until everything is combined. By the way, if you notice this is a bigger portion compared to the first two recipes, it's because it is. I doubled all the ingredients because this is what I chose to eat for dinner. Don't worry though, you can follow these exact steps with the amounts listed and get the exact same result. Again, I like to give the flavors a minute to intertwine before adding the last set of ingredients. Pour our kimchi mixture over the top, stir it in, and let all those flavors mingle together. Keep the wok on the stovetop for about one to two minutes while constantly moving the ingredients around and serve. To make this dish look extra exquisite, put your rice in a bowl and onto a plate like the first recipe, lay your egg right on top, and garnish with a couple pieces of green onion. Restaurant quality in less than 15 minutes start to finish. No matter which fried rice you make, you cannot go wrong. You get a huge portion that is loaded with flavor in each and every bite. However, flavor can be stacked and if you want to add even more flavor, you can top these with my chipotle aioli recipe, which you can check out how to make here. Until next time. Deuces.